Behind mud walls in a dusty Afghan province, a tactical operation is underway. <laughs> Intel suggests insurgents are hiding out in the village and these Afghan commandos are here to hunt down the enemy. This isn't a real mission, but part of the training. Once instructed by US Special Forces, now Afghans are calling the shots. As the US prepares to withdraw troops by the end of the year, the focus has turned to training, advising and assisting the Afghan security forces. And nowhere is that more effective than at Camp Commando on the outskirts of Kabul, where a seven-year partnership is now producing Afghanistan's elite soldiers. When I see the American Special Force, I uh, got an idea to be a Special Force of Afghanistan Force to help our people in our country. There are 10,500 Afghan commandos that proudly wear the red beret. And Major General Karim is their leader. His nine battalions across the country are taking the fight to the insurgency. And his U.S. partner, Colonel Brian Pettit, couldn't be prouder. These guys have done the hard fighting. They have an incredible track record of, uh, of fighting, winning uh, in some of, the, some of the toughest places. If there's a campaign or a battle in this country that, uh, that, that was hard fought, uh, commandos have had their fingerprints on that. Regardless of the achievements, they're still heavily reliant on the U.S. for air support, heavy weaponry and intelligence gathering. All under threat after President Karzai refused to sign the bilateral security agreement, allowing an enduring U.S. presence post-2014. That critical decision has been left up to his successor, who voters will elect at the polls on Saturday despite threats of violence by the Taliban. While there's no denying the Afghan commandos have become a force the public can be proud of, they still need America's help. And there's a firm belief within the top brass of both the Afghan and US military that without this partnership, Afghanistan could become a safe haven for terrorists once again. And while America's longest war has become widely unpopular in the US, words of advice to a war-weary country. For the people back home, uh, I would just have them uh, remember uh, what they felt on uh, September 11, 2001. Uh, the attacks on the U.S. emanated out of this country, not from this country, but from international terrorists that found this to, to be a hospitable place. That could happen again. And it's these soldiers on the ground that will be fighting to try to make sure that doesn't happen. Anna Corrin, CNN, Kabul.